Hey everyone, it's good to be with you. My name is Pastor Joseph Bianco. I'm a pastor in Pittsburgh, Pennsylvania, and we've been going through the Epistle of Philippians. So we're in Philippians chapter 1, verse uh, 19 today, and let me begin with a prayer and then we'll read the word. Gracious and Heavenly Father, we pray that as we read your word, Lord, we would be encouraged by your spirit. We pray that we, with the Apostle Paul, might even be able to proclaim words like, for me to live is Christ and to die is gain. Father, we recognize that we can only say those words empowered by your Spirit. So, Lord, would you send out your Spirit uh, generously. We pray it in Christ's name. Amen. Hear the word of the Lord from Philippians 1, starting in verse 19. Yes, I will rejoice. For I know that through your prayers and the help of the Spirit of Jesus Christ, this will turn out for my deliverance, as it is my eager expectation and hope that I will not be at all ashamed, but that with full courage now as always, Christ will be honored in my body, whether by life or by death. This is the word of the Lord. So Paul begins here, yes, I will rejoice. Is it possible for us to rejoice now? That's a hard question. Can Christians rejoice at times like these? Should we rejoice? How do we understand Paul's words? You know, I listened to a a live Tim Keller broadcast about the coronavirus recently, and he gave some pithy Tim Keller advice, as he always does. He said, in times like these, trust and weep. Trust and weep. We have to do both. Now, considering the Apostle Paul's words here, how might we understand that today? Maybe rejoice and weep? You see, we need to notice something in this text. That word deliverance uh, in the text isn't a reference to Paul's deliverance from prison. Why? Well, he goes on to talk later about the possibility of his death. Verse 21, for me to live is Christ, to die is gain. So what's this deliverance? Well, more than likely, it's deliverance from the suffering of prison. Whether that happens in life or in death, Paul is ready, and Paul is rejoicing. I'm certain that because of this language of deliverance, that Paul is also suffering. And with any suffering comes tears. So I might change Tim Keller's uh, pithy statement from trust and weep to rejoice and weep. Even in the midst of suffering, those who believe in Jesus have a sure hope. Not even death can steal our joy. Let me say that again. Not even death can steal our joy. Paul says in verse 20, that Christ will be honored in my body, whether by life or by death. You know, maybe Jesus isn't your Savior. Maybe you don't believe in God right now. But I I wonder how you're processing uh, this time where we see death all around us. Perhaps God is encouraging you to remember him. That you too might trust in him and have peace when we see death all around us. You see, we Christians believe in something called the bodily resurrection. And it's implicit in Paul's words. Paul knows that if he dies in this life, he will be raised physically in the next. You see, for thousands of years, Christians have proclaimed uh, these words from this ancient creed, I look forward to the resurrection of the dead and the life of the world to come. Paul looked forward to this as well. Paul knew that not even death could stop the redeeming work of God. Well, I hope this was encouraging for you as it was for me. I want you to thank you for being with us. And would you please consider sharing this video and encouraging someone else? May the Lord bless you and keep you. May you seek to love God and your neighbor. Thanks.